Now, Triple D, I think I've seen them all. I've seen the Della Contestants, I've seen the diners, I've seen the sandwich shops, I've seen the corner stores, you name it. But I'm here in Richmond, Virginia, where this couple has resurrected an institution. They've brought it back using their own little funky style. This is Pearly's Restaurant and Delicatessen. Walking in, beef knish. There's nothing I've ever tasted or been to that's like Pearlie's. The pearl scene for you? This is nothing like your regular delicatessen or diner. That's because Rochelle and Kevin Roberts are mixing his master cooking with the food her bubby used to make. I'm Jewish, okay. and there was nowhere to get this food. Where'd you get all the recipes? Family recipes that have been tweaked, collaborations between the two of us. They have a lot of items on their menus that you're not going to find in other places. For instance, the potato and duck pierogies. Potato and duck pierogies. You ever had pierogies before? These pierogies are better than any other pierogies that you can find. Creamy, hearty, moist. All of a sudden, he's taking over the show. He's starting to give the whole description and everything. I just asked him if he'd had pierogies before. How are we starting this thing off? We're going to make some pierogi dough. Okay. Eggs, sour cream. It's the way I always make my pierogi dough. Water and salt. AP flour. How long are we going to let this mix up? For a few minutes, and then we wrap it up and let it rest in the refrigerator. All right, so now we're going to make the cure for the duck legs. OK. White sugar, brown sugar, sumac, and some kosher salt. So breakfast and lunch? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you're taking all the time to make confit duck legs? Why not? Does she let you go home? I mean, do you just stay here? She likes it when I'm home, actually, yes. You didn't have to say it in a sultry voice <laughs> like that. <laughs> Crushed juniper berry, raw garlic, fresh thyme, the duck legs on top of this and then we'll reverse the order. And we do it again? Yep. The garlic, and then the juniper. How many days are on your calendar? Just the seven. How many hours? <laughs> 60. 60 hours a day? That's when I figured you were working. <laughs> Refrigerated overnight, and then we'll cook them in the schmaltz. The almighty schmaltz. Two to three hours. What are we on to now? Well, we're going to make a roast tomato ketchup, which is going to go into the sauce for the final dish. Go into the sauce. Throw my tomatoes, okay. chopped garlic, dried oregano, some dried basil. Salt and pepper. And roast these off what temp? 350 degree oven for about an hour. Put it in a container with tomato paste and puree it until smooth. OK, chef. Now we're going to make the filling for the pierogies, boiled potatoes, green onions, some of the duck leg confit, mixed peppercorn blend, kosher salt. Mash it around. We're going to add a little bit of that reserved duck fat. So this whole process is by hand. And then we haven't even got into the rolling out of the dough. That is correct. Oh, my goodness. And you don't have a sheeter? I do not have a sheeter. I'm going to get you one for your birthday. When's your birthday? My birthday was Monday. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at least a bigger rolling pin, huh? That come with an easy bake oven? <laughs> we'll cut our dough, brush it with a little slurry of cornstarch and water. Slurry up. Pierogi filling. How are we cooking these from here? They go into the boiling pot of water. All of this activity going for one item on the menu? That is correct. <sighs> You're a busy man. So we're going to start with duck fat, pierogies, shiitake button mushrooms. The ketchup that we made? I like to char the ketchup. Oh, I me too, always. <laughs> Cooked mirepoix. Duck stock, cover and let it reduce. What do we do now? Wait. OK, good talk. <laughs> All right. Voila. And we top it off with a little chive sour cream. I don't know that the word pierogi describes this. It's like calling my Camaro car. That's a vintage hot rod. Yeah. Great duck. The duck jus reduction with the pierogi soaks up. The vegetables, the mushrooms, a little kiss of that roasted tomato sauce. This is like I've been going to all the movies in black and white. And then today I went to IMAX. A dynamite. Thank you. You know, one of the things I'm always getting asked about Triple D is, guy, how do you find all these crazy places? Well, I'm telling you, I'm not throwing darts at a map or using a Ouija board. A lot of it's you guys. I mean, you know what's funky. You know what's out there. So here I am in Cleveland going to another one of your favorites, Melt Bar and Grill. I need some cheese, please. You don't hear of a place that just has grilled cheese. Tell me this place is not off the chain. Dude, it's bomb, man. Got a purple farmer going up. West Side Monte Cristo, it's delicious. Hot Italian for you? It's amazing. The food's really good and really awesome grilled cheese sandwiches. It's the best in Cleveland. I'm a big fan. So is my Aunt Polly. The creativeness is just awesome. Yep, grilled cheese done more than 30 different ways. Trees of potato. By chef and owner Matt Fish. Farm Italy working. Who just can't give up his childhood favorite. I think we can stick anything inside of it and it's still considered a grilled cheese sandwich. Peanut butter, banana, cream cheese. Peanut butter, banana. The blackened chicken for you, sir? When I come here, I only get the big popper. We got a big popper heading that way. Kind of like a jalapeno popper, just sandwich form. Take it for a test drive, my friend. 
Wow, dude, that's hot. That tastes like a jalapeno popper. There's even one stuffed with this local favorite. Giant potato pierogi on there. Parmageddon. Parmageddon is so Cleveland. Why does it get called Parmageddon? First suburb outside of Cleveland going south is Parma. Parma is the Polish hotbed in Cleveland, and pierogies is a main staple. OK. We're going to start with our grilled bread every time. Turn our saute pan on. We're going to add our vegetable oil. We're going to brown our pierogies. They're just fresh potatoes, a good hearty cheddar cheese in there. So we brown them real nice on both sides. And our grilled onions. Woo! Guambe grilled sandwich. Look at that, girls. Nice soft cabbage for us. Oh, this is like the crowd spice that we made earlier today. OK. Vodka. And then our some cider vinegar. And that's it. All we're going to do is just let this get happy, happy, happy. You are crazy. I try, man. Try. I'm telling you, Michael Simon, Eric at Momocho, Heather at Lucky's, and now this cat. I don't know about this town. Crazy people. OK, so this is going to reduce. All the liquid's going to be gone. I'm going to flip the bread. Oh, please do. Some sharp cheddar cheese goes on both sides of the bread. We do approximately four ounces of cheese on every sandwich. Yeah. Brogies down first. All that good, good caramelization in goes on top. Easy. Flipping that bad boy onto the tray, into the meltification machine. Yes. Three to five minutes in that oven to get this to be the perfect grilled cheese sandwich. All right, let's do this, man. Ooh. Oh, man. Out of bounds. Crunch on the bread, fantastic. Pierogi, great. But the cabbage with the vodka and the cider, it's over the top and around again over the top. Oh, thank you. That is one of the best grilled cheese I've ever had. You know who I have to bring in here? Now, Polly, tell me what you wow. think of this. That's the bomb. <laughs> Bursting with flavor. Oh, thank you. So back in the day, if you told somebody you were going to get them some German food, some Polish food, or Russian food, most people would say, nah, I'm good. I'll just have Italian. But what you're seeing now is people are taking these old world foods, putting new school spins on them, and just doing these awesome pop-ups. So we're here in Bridesburg, right in the northeast side of Philadelphia, to check out a joint where they're using grandma's recipes to make it the real deal. This is Mom Mom's Kitchen. Philly cheesesteak pierogi. The Philly cheesesteak pierogi is basically a Philly cheesesteak wrapped up in a pouch. You actually don't even miss the bread because the pierogies are that good. All right, so what are we going to make? We're going to start with our dough. We start off with some sour cream. This is Mom Mom's recipe. It's actually not. Ryan and I developed these recipes on our own. Melted butter, oil, whole eggs, and whole egg yolks. AP flour? Yep. Kosher salt. How long are we going to mix it? Three to five minutes. It does rest for how long? Usually overnight for us. Take the dough, we'll sheet it out, punch out the rings. So you made that look real easy peasy. Now we make the filling. We'll start off with a little oil on the grill. Thinly sliced ribeye here. This is some Cooper Sharp American cheese. To think that you didn't have a culinary background, you sure move like you have a culinary background. <laughs> Quite a few pierogi that we've made. How many think it is? I wish I knew how many I've eaten in my lifetime. <laughs> All right, so nice mixture of that. The dough is ready to go. Should I start timing her? <laughs> Oh, look at that little technique. Mm -hmm. Try not to get any filling in the seam In between there. the two. Turn it over, a little pinch again, and there you have it. That's a good looking pierogi. These go into the water for three minutes, bring them out, let them cool. Toss them on our flat top grill to sear for a couple of minutes till crispy on each side. Whoa, 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 what is that? Black pepper ketchup. Ketchup on cheese steaks? I've never I heard mean, of it. I mean, I'm a fan, really? really? Yeah, it's a big thing. <laughs> you be the judge. Caramelized onions, and these cook for hours, so they're super sweet. Little scallion. That's all she there wrote. Have it. Am I supposed to eat these with my hand or with a fork? Hand is totally acceptable. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I've had a lot of pierogies on Triple D, and I've had a lot of pierogies just in regular life. That pierogi dough with the sour cream and the whole barnyard of chickens. It's silky, luxurious, melts in your mouth. Wow. It's absolutely wrecking regular cheesesteaks for me right now. And you guys made this up? Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like a little sauce. It's nice to have that little acid, little sweet. Dynamite, dynamite. I mean, this isn't just like, hey, my grandmother was Polish. This is like a legitimate, groundbreaking destination dish. So I'm here in the south side of Boston in an area known as the Polish Triangle. Now, I'm here to check out exactly what you'd expect, a Polish restaurant. But not just any Polish restaurant. We're talking about one of the most real deal, authentic Polish restaurants you'll find in Massachusetts. This is Cafe Polonia. The cabbage roll is ready. The minute you walked into that door, the smells is overwhelming you. You don't want to leave. Kielbasa with Hunter stew for you, ma'am. The menu is very, very close to what my mother used to do. But here, dad's running the show. Chef and owner, Teddy Barczykowski. Why Polonia? We call the old people Polonia. 
they still living outside the mother country. So people that live outside the mother country yeah. are called Polonia? Yeah. I like it. And before Teddy was a Polonia, he fought against communism in the Polish Air Force. Then he escaped to the U.S. with his family recipes, opening this joint in 02. Pierogi are ready to go. I love the pierogi, and that's one of the few places that actually does it the real, authentic way. What are we going to make first? We're going to make first the meat pierogies. Let's go. We have two kinds of meat, pork shoulder, and you have the chop tender. Okay, the pork. Then you're going to add you know, the celery, parsley, leeks. We have a carrots. We have a bay leaves here, all spices. Granulated, granulated garlic. Granulated garlic, granulated onions. Vegeta spices. Vegeta. You know what is this? Vegeta is vegetable base used tremendously in Europe. Yeah. We have to bring to boil. Let it simmer? Yeah. And how long is this going to cook? One and a half hour. Gotcha. Now we pull the meat out of the vegetables. Meat is finished, caramelized onions. Yes. Now we're going to grind the mixture that's going to go in the pierogi. Yes. Holy moly, that's coming out fine. Onions. Oh, Yahtzee. Now we mix the meat. Now we're going to roll out dough for the pierogies. You're going to cut it in three pieces. And you're going to roll it up. Now we cover it with water. Time to make the pierogies. Right in the middle? Yeah. Take all the air out. Got it? And then the cutter. Let's put these in the water. Now, how long have these cooked? Three to five minutes. Very nice. Sour cream in the middle. Caramelized onion with the bacon bits. Parsley. It's going to be hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very light, very tender. When people say, oh, pierogi, they've had frozen, not handmade pierogies. And if you try this, it'll change the way you think of them. I grew up in Poland, so I come to Teddy to have a good dish. He's a great cook. There is no doubt about that. It's just the best. <laughs> you put a lot of time and care the way you handle the food. You put a lot of heart in it. All my energies. If you come down here, you got to meet this cat.